oh, I need more money. No, you don't. You need more experience. Especially in the beginning. You don't need more money. You need more experience. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I am JD, owner and stylist of J. Nicole Custom LLC. I'm a licensed cosmetologist in the state of Michigan and I specialize in natural hair, protective styling, and just overall the maintenance and integrity of our hair, your hair, my client's hair. Um, I do tip videos, um, business tip videos, um, hair tutorials, week in the life of a salon, stylist, owner, um, and just some lifestyle stuff is incorporated in there because my life is literally um, my business. So I do a little bit of everything. If you are a returning subscriber, hey girl, hey boo, I love to see you. Yes. Before I get into this video, um, essentially what the whole mission, the goal is, is to let me be like your virtual mentor, your bestie, your sis, your um, helper and friend. Um, just a resource for you to use while you're building your business um, or whether you're going through school, whether you're thinking about starting school, whatever the case is. Um, I just kind of want to like share on my platform things that I've learned through trial and error. Um, I've been doing hair for quite some time. I've been licensed three years um, and I've been working for myself pretty much as long as you know I've worked. So I've been working for myself in my own sweet space for about a year and a half, almost two years. So a lot of things that I share are literally like, I'm trying to like really be honest, transparent, um, and just realistic for people out there. That was like me in the beginning, you know, that's really my goal um, because I kind of wish that I had more resources or just like more like sit down conversations and it felt like, okay, I can trust you. Like I wish I had that in the beginning. So that's really my goal um, here on my platform. And then of course, to just like share the inside scoops and like what it looks like a week in the life or a day in the life of a stylist or my off days or, you know, just different things, balancing, learning, you know, learning how to balance work and life, which is something I'm still learning. Um, but this is just my platform, this is the space, this is the safe space for um, aspiring stylists, new stylists, um, new business owners, um, and take what you need. I hope something resonates with you. Um, and if that interests you, then of course subscribe. As you can tell by the title of this video, we are going to talk about ways to price your services in the beginning. Just starting out, whether again, you're a student, whether you're just now licensed, newly licensed, whether you're thinking about going to school, whatever the case is, um, this is things that help me um, gain clientele, gain some credibility, um, and just learn overall, just learn different textures of hair, different techniques, different um, products and everything. If you wanna hear the five things that I think will help you um, better price your services in the beginning, then keep watching the video. The first thing being, how knowledgeable are you um, in doing whatever services that you are offering, um, as well as if you are confident, you know what I mean? Like I said that in the previous video that, you know, it's one thing, like you have to be confident, especially starting out, um, but you have clients that will try to test, you know, what you know, or try to like little dog you because like in the beginning, you know, you don't really have much of a clientele or much credibility because you're building, right? You're just not starting to have some clients that are just those clients looking for a good deal, cheap deal. Um, so you could do a service or just agree to doing a service that you feel like you can do, but you've never really done. And that client can, can become a headache for you. And you don't want that. Especially when pricing, like when offering a service period, doesn't matter whether it's hair, um, you have to be knowledgeable in what you are offering. Um, and you have to be confident in what you are offering because if you can sell yourself because you're knowledgeable and confident, then that's one point, you know, they're going to be more comfortable and more prone to booking and basically believing in you in the beginning. Number two, a way to think about pricing. How long have you been offering a service? How long have you been practicing the style that you offer or services that you offer? Um, how many ways have you learned to do it? You've done it on different textures of hair. Have you done 4B, 4C hair? How many clients have you done with 3B, 3A? Like, have you had the chance to actually, you know, um, do multiple people, not family and friends, outside of just family and friends, but people that, you know, that are actually customers, potential clients. Um, 
And y'all y'all will hear me interchange that word, clients and customers, because I believe clients are the ones that sick, like they book in appointments before they leave. Customers are those who just kind of come, sit in your chair. You might see them once a year, you might see them twice a year, but those clients are the ones that are keeping your books full. So like once it comes to next month, you only have you know limited availability because your clients are steady booking again, they coming back. So that will really help, that's really helpful. Um, that's why I interchange the word clients and customers, clients and customers, because um, not everybody is a client. How much experience have you had? Have you, um, you know, worked under a, a different stylist? Have you worked under a licensed stylist? Or have you worked as an assistant or even a receptionist? Like a job, you know? They ask you sometimes certain jobs, and especially because this is a service that, you know, you are doing on someone, your clients want to, you know, know. Like three um, will definitely be what all you offer. So what do you offer? Um, how many services do you offer? How do you determine what price is what price for what service? Um, how do you calculate that? How long does it take you to do these services? Think about it, okay, like especially starting out. So think about it like, okay, when I started out, I think I charged like $100 flat for um, regular size braids. We had medium braids and then I did large braids. So I would get booked a lot for medium braids and large braids. So in the beginning, I think I want to say I charged $75 for my large braids. Um, but my clients was coming washed. My clients was coming um, sectioned for me. They were bringing their hair. Um, so essentially, it was taking me about three hours. So if I'm charging $75, that's $25 an hour. And that's good, especially starting out. That's really good. If it took me three hours or four hours, that's $25 an hour. To me, I was content with that. I felt like that wasn't too bad. Like, because if you think about it, you know, braids, my clients gonna keep these braids in for, you know, two months, a month and a half. My clients gonna keep these braids in anywhere from four to eight weeks. Like, at least they can if they choose to. For my medium braids, I wanna say I charge, I charge, um, $95 or 80 I think I charged $95 because they were not as big as the large braids of course but they were just a little bit smaller so I charged 95 because those did take me around anywhere between three and a half and four hours um just depending on my client here so again break that price down between our between your hourly rate and you know what you're making um for my small braids i think the most i charged was 100 or 125 dollars i would have to like go on my instagram and like just like check and see because i know i have some posted still but um i wasn't like going you know crazy or doing anything wild because a couple things i was not that experienced when I first started. I had only been doing my sister's and my mom's hair. Once I started taking clients, I realized just how different each client's head was. Like so, whereas I could, I feel like you know, oh, she has, she got nice hair. Um, both my clients got nice hair, but one head is denser than the other. At the end of the day, one head is smaller than the other. One head is finer than the other. That was kind of like giving me um room to really learn like okay i'm just learning literally each client is a learning like i'm learning it's like a mannequin hair for me and i was just starting out um at my house so super appreciated for that like i just be like oh my god people really used to be booking me what all do you offer how long do it take you what are you using um how much experience you have um are you knowledgeable about you know these services and different you know heads of hair kind of start there these last two are probably like the meat of this video for real um to really give you an idea of where to start when you really sit down and make a price list and you stick by that price list until you are licensed or until you move into a, another space or location so number four what would you pay ask yourself what would you pay if you were going to you as a customer if you were going to yourself and you knew of this person or you didn't know anything of this person um so you didn't know if this person was credible you didn't know if the person you know did this for fun you didn't know if the person did this because you know it was just 
quick money you didn't know for sure if the person did this because you know this is what they actually wanted to do i've had so many people so many clients come in and they'll be like you know well how long have you been doing hair you know just making conversation and they'll be like okay so like you like how long have you been doing hair and then when i tell them you know i've been doing hair like i really started doing like my own hair at like 12 13 because i just really found like i knew that was my passion and i enjoyed doing hair and when i realized like i could be a cosmetologist it was over like that was always the goal so i always knew like from high school i wasn't going to college i wasn't doing uh you know i wasn't doing a traditional thing i was going to get my trade i was going to get my license my certificate and that's what i wanted to do um so for clients to know like oh she actually you know aspires to be a cosmetologist oh she actually aspires to like be licensed and like take this somewhere and like go far with it and you know actually perfect her craft what would you pay so what would you pay if you were going to a beginner a stylist that you know you really did you weren't familiar with what work they had versus you know you only seen work on social media you've never seen none of the clients in person you don't know if you know where you're going to get your hair done you don't know if it's going to be professional clean or dirty you don't know if it's going to be in the hood you don't know if it's going to be in the base you just don't know so in the beginning you really have to think like okay what would you pay I personally, I wouldn't have paid me any more than $100 or $125 for the services that I was offering at the time. Um, and back then, five years ago, four years ago, $125, that was like, okay, I better get my money's worth. You know what I mean? And that was with no wash and you had to provide your own hair. So ways that I was able though to, I feel like retain a clientele and just really like actually build it consistently to where I am now is because of the things that I mentioned in my how to attract my clientele so and how to um, gain clientele those tip videos really helped me um, with becoming more credible for people and people actually trusting me because word of mouth is still a thing never 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 think that word of mouth is not a thing or the fact that your clients are literally your um promoters like free promoters every time a client leave on my chair they are promoting me like even now I, I work right next to a tj maxx i've literally had clients who have booked me because they've seen girls walk out of my suite and go into tj maxx or walk to their car and they're like oh my god who just did your hair and boom i'm plugged right there quick i'm booked you know that's two clients next week or in two weeks what would you pay um I just keep getting off I like y'all i could just talk all day obviously about this stuff from one tip to another tip and at this point i gave y'all about 12 tips i think i don't know but stay stay with me the last thing the real meat of this video the real meat of this video your competitor's price and i used to always cringe when people would be like you know well you know well, what you know what's everybody else charging or what's so and so doing and like honestly i can still say it's not a lot of people who who like live in the same area as me who's pricing i've looked at to gauge how much i'm a i'm a charge i've never done that if i've looked at anybody's pricing i've looked at people who stay in bigger cities than me to see what are they clients paying and especially stylists who i feel like work mimics mine or is similar to mine what your clients paying that's all i'm like that's what i'm thinking because they're in bigger cities um what's their policies how are they looking where are they lo located and these are things i'm seeing but in the beginning you genuinely have to be aware you have to be aware the services that you are offering how much is ashley down the street charging how much is kiki charging how much is they charging how much are they charging um especially if you have people you have people that are more experienced in something that you are pursuing or something that you are um working on and getting better at you can't be in the same price range as them you can't even really be 25 dollars cheaper than them because for customers you have to think from a customer standpoint I would much rather pay $25 more to go to a licensed stylist or to a stylist who's been doing hair for two years and you've only been doing it for two months or a stylist who has a bigger portfolio 
and I can see more of their work and I can see more clients and I can see what type of textures they work with, what type of work they actually do. And it's not just the same, you know, so, so many people. Um, I would much rather pay the $25 more because I know what I'll get and they're a little bit more credible. I'll feel safer and I'll feel more comfortable because I'm like, okay, this is gonna be an investment. Your hair is always an investment. So this is gonna be an investment and I gotta be confident on this investment because I'll be damned if I pay to get my hair done and it don't be how I want it to or it don't be how your pictures look. What is your competitor, like what, what are the other braiders um, charging? What are the other natural hair girls charging? Are you the one that's like bringing, you know, the new style trend to the city and you know it's gonna take off so you charging what you charging because You've taken, you know, two master classes and you've taken two virtual online classes with master stylists. Like, what is it? What you got to really, like, you kind of really got to gauge that. Um, you have to think about the pricing market right now for whatever services you are offering. Um, and it's okay to pay your dues in the beginning. I want to say this and I'm going to get out your way. I'm going to stop. I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to be quiet. If you don't take nothing away from this video, in the beginning, it's okay to, um, not be in it just because of the money and feel like oh i need more money no you don't you need more experience especially in the beginning you don't need more money you need more experience because the money is gonna come the money will increase as your skills increase your money gonna increase that pay gonna increase it's gonna be a time where you are getting paid you are getting paid for what you are worth but you gotta pay your dues and that's with anything like i remember my sister i need to ask her can i put this in the video um <laughs> i remember my sister my twin graduated college and um which I think a lot of people experience this unless they already have things lined up and stuff. But she graduated college and in the beginning it was like like it was a it was difficult trying to find a job and it was like right in like mid pandemic. It was just weird. So she had this degree and she was just like, What the f why can I get a get a job? I'm not selling for this job because I'm not selling for this job, this job, this job, this job. Because I just did four years in college. I got this degree. I got knowledge. I got work history. Why? Like, what is it? Why am I not qualifying? Or why can I find what you know my pay range and what I want to get paid? And I kept telling her like, Do you understand? Like, you just paying your dues. Like, girl, you 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 been out here two days. Like, you just got out here. But you cannot expect to just walk into yo you know the 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 good part of things especially in the beginning like you gotta pay your dues you gotta pay your dues you gotta do you know the work you gotta be the little dog you know until you actually make a name for yourself make a point to you know stand out and make yourself somebody who's credible and somebody who i want to go to her i want to go to him well i want to hire her like no questions asked and that's also why i say like it's important to be passionate about whatever it is you're doing at the end of the day like it's 2022 a lot of people are trying to find their purpose and their passion because when you find that and you can do it as work it don't feel like work it don't feel like work you got some days where you just like i don't feel like this shit today i have my days but for the most part when i tell y'all and i sit and i think of where i am or where i was i'm so grateful because y'all it comes back it comes back when you put in the work and you grind y'all it's gonna come back so in the beginning do not try to get all the money because you know what's out there to get and focus on getting better focus on building your, your your clientele focus on building relationships focus on building your knowledge focus on the important things the foundation Lay out your foundation. Make sure your foundation ain't got no cracks in it. And I'm not saying it got to be perfect, but try to make get it close to perfect as possible. Then everything else, that money is coming because it's out there to get. Like it's, a, it's clients for everybody. It's so many clients for everybody. And you have so many opportunities in this industry to just continuously grow and grow and grow. Like you can go where you take yourself in this industry. And that's what's so amazing about it. I really, really love it. I always say that, but... 10 out of 10 I recommend, especially if this is something that you are passionate about or you find yourself always, you know, leaning towards or you know you could do it, but you're just not sure. Like, well, dang, girl, do it. Listen, y'all do it. That is it. That is it for this video. I know I talked y'all ear off in this video. I hope this helped. I hope this helped. But at any given time, y'all can always leave me a comment. Um, I'm really good at responding to comments as soon as they come so i don't like to leave y'all waiting or just wondering what i think or you know what i did or if you have any questions though if y'all have any um video suggestions things that y'all want to see as far as building a business or cosmetology school or anything um 
then of course leave them below and lastly i hope y'all enjoyed this video i hope it was helpful yes that is pretty much it so i will see y'all in my next video